Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday morning to you. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. I do appreciate you being with me. Hey, yesterday, and look, we're going to get back to our study of the Olivet Discourse. And, and by the way, this is this is so relevant. I, I've had people tell me, well, you know, the study of prophecy, uh, it's kind of an ivory tower, uh, academic, intellectual exercise, doesn't really have much to do with our world and the way that we live. That's simply false. There are, there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in this world, perhaps some of you watching this, who are living in fear because right now, the world is in the grips of the coronavirus. And the prophecy pundits are telling us this is a sign of the end. After all, Jesus predicted as a sign of the end of his coming, the end of the age, he predicted there would be pestilence. Matthew chapter 24. Well, what's more pestilential than the coronavirus? I'm hearing people say, we've never seen anything like this. As I shared with you yesterday, and I hope you'll go back and watch yesterday's morning musings. When people say, <clears throat> what we're seeing now is unprecedented, that is simply false. Absolutely false. But of course, the great question is, is the coronavirus a sign that we are in the last days? Is it a sign that the coming of the Lord is right around the corner? Well, first of all, in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is walking out of the temple and the disciples begin to show him the beauty of the temple, all of the temple complex and the, and the beautiful, beautiful stones and the size of the stones from which it was constructed. And Jesus says, do you not see all of these things? The time is coming in which not one stone will be left standing on top of another. The disciples were absolutely stunned. It is not that they did not know the temple was to be destroyed. The Old Testament had predicted that. Even some of the living rabbis of the, town, of the time knew it was supposed to happen. Do you realize at the time that Jesus spoke those words, beginning in about 30 A.D., according to historical sources, according to the Talmud and according to Josephus, the gates of the temple <clears throat> would open themselves. Now look, normally it took 20 men to open and close them. But the gates would open by themselves. And they couldn't keep it from happening. And Rabbi Ben Zakkai, one of the leading rabbis of the day, <clears throat> spoke and said, why do you do thus and predict, and I'm paraphrasing here, and predict the coming disaster. He knew, and by the way, he was quoting from the book of Zechariah. He appealed to the book of Zechariah. So here's this rabbi who, know, who knew that the gates being of the, of the temple opening all by themselves was a sign of the coming judgment. Now look, that went on beginning in, in approximately 30 A.D. all the way until 70 A.D. You suppose, do you suppose that Jesus knew about that? Do you suppose the apostles knew that that was happening? I mean, after all, they're in the temple at the time. Do you, you, you just suppose that people weren't talking about that incredible event that had begun almost three years earlier? Well, anyway, <clears throat> the disciples in response to Jesus' prediction said, tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Now, here's the problem, folks. Most people believe when they read that, they think of Jesus coming at the so-called end of time, an imaginary doctrine, and the end of the Christian age. The Christian age has no end. 
The gospel will never cease to function. The church will never cease to function. That means the gospel age, the messianic age in which we live, will never cease to function. And so modern commentators, maybe you've done this, I did, I most assuredly did. We approach that text with an erroneous presupposition. Jesus is talking about the end of the current age, our age, the age in which you and I are living instead of the age represented by the temple. Well, let me ask you, what age did the temple at Jerusalem represent? Once you answer that question, you answer it biblically and truthfully, then you know without a shadow of a doubt the disciples were not asking about the end of time. They were not asking about the end of the Christian age. They were asking about the end of the old covenant age that the temple represented. Now, here we have Jesus <clears throat> giving the warnings. First of all, he urged them, do not be deceived. You know, yesterday I shared with you the history of some of the worst pandemics, that the, the worst pandemics that the world has ever seen. During those periods of time, and even in more modern times, we have had the so-called prophecy experts. Every time something horrendous happens, they start telling us, this is it. The end is near. YouTube is alive with such predictions right now. And every one of them are false. All of the individuals who are contacting me asking, number one, is this a sign of the end? That is, is the corona a sign of the end? Or number two, pardon me, making the claim that the coronavirus is a sign of the end are absolutely misguided. And I say that with all kindness. I say that with all respect. I say that with all firmness, however. Again, keep in mind, Jesus was not predicting and the disciples were not asking about the end of our age. Now, since we already know, as I shared with you yesterday, that there have been pandemics that so far outstrip the coronavirus, then there is absolutely no justification for saying, we've never seen anything like this, this must be a sign. But you see, when Jesus in Matthew 24, and, the, and the, obviously the parallels in Mark and Luke, when he spoke of the coming pestilence, and, let, and let's be sure of this, folks, in the first century, in Jesus' generation, there were outbreaks of pestilence in Rome, in Egypt, in all areas of the known world, which took thousands upon thousands upon thousands of lives. That's just a fact of history. Josephus records it. Tacitus records it. Cassius Dio records it. Suetonius records it. The facts are there. And most of all, when we come to Matthew chapter 24, and I hope you'll just go back. I hope you'll look carefully at the videos that we have produced demonstrating that every single thing that Jesus predicted that would happen before the quote end, before his parousia, before the end of the age, it took place in the first century. And then, of course, we have his emphatic, explicit, undeniable and irrefutable words in Matthew 24 and verse 34. Verily I say unto you. Now that's about the strongest Greek expression that can be used to drive home the point. To drive it home beyond any shadow of a doubt. Verily I say unto you. This generation, that's his generation, not some future generation, and it's not making babies, This generation will by no means pass until all, not some, not a little bit, not even most, but until all of these things are fulfilled. It is stunning to me and sad 
how people will distort and twist the plain language of Scripture. Folks, look, the term this generation does not refer to this kind of people. And it doesn't refer to baby making. It refers, and if, all you got to do is go to the lexicons. That term, when used in the construction that it's used in Matthew 24, 34, as it's used in Matthew chapter 23, means all the people living at a given time. And what that means is, very simply, is the coronavirus is not a sign that we're living in the last days. I've written a book, The Last Days Identified. It's on my website, donkpresta.com, bibleprophecy.com. If you go there and you order the book, and I want to tell you, that book has changed the lives of literally thousands of people. I have heard from countless numbers of people who have told me, this book has done more to give me peace of mind to know that we are not in the last days. You go there to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, and you order the book, The Last Days Identified. You send me a note saying, Don, I saw your offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping. Okay? Take advantage of that. Not because I'm trying to sell a book, but because you need the peace of mind to know we are not living in the last days. The coronavirus has nothing to do with the last days. It has nothing to do with the end of time. It has nothing to do with the coming of the Lord. All right. Let not your heart be troubled. The coronavirus, as serious as it is, the medical authorities will get a handle on it. They will find a way to contain it. Take all of your necessary precautions, but let not your heart be troubled. The end is not here. We're not living in the last days. I'll see you on the flip side.